Hi, I'm Dana Gasper. I'm here with my dad and we are planting up some tropical planters for our shore house together. As you can see, we have a lot of larger mature plants here. It's about mid-June already and we're planting down here at the beach. So we're really going for that instant gratification, a really full lush tropical look. Um, and luckily this time of year, we have a lot of larger mature tropical plants available. Uh, we picked out some things that are really gonna kind of brighten up this area and give a nice tropical feel to it. So we also brought down a lot of our tropicals that we get in from Florida a few times a season. This is a white bird of paradise. Generally, these are the ones that don't flower. Um, the appeal of these plants is this gorgeous structure of foliage that they have. We're gonna put this one in, as an anchor point in the back pot, um, really kind of set that tropical mood. I'm probably going to put this one, this is a pink mandevilla. This will vine up gorgeously and stay lush and colorful all summer. Probably put that one in the other pot in the back because that'll also get pretty tall um, and really kind of set that tropical tone. Here we have some of the items that we'll need for our planters. I've got some good organic potting mix. We also have the planter inserts or soil shelves. And if the soil shelves don't fit, there's some other options you can use to fill up all of that extra space you don't need. Here we're using packaging peanuts. I've also got some, some garden tools. I've got a spade, some pruners, a garden knife. Usually people like to use gloves. I'm a fan of feeling things you know, with my fingers. <laughs> So I usually don't, um, but of course that comes with a lot of dirt under the fingernails. So it's a give and take. We always want to use frost resistant pottery. All the outdoor pottery that we carry at Gasper is frost resistant. You can usually tell um, by the thickness of the clay. We import all of our pots from Vietnam because all of the pots that they make there tend to be that necessary thickness that they can withstand our winters here outside. So the key with keeping your frost resistant pots frost resistant is providing adequate drainage. As long as the water can escape out of the drainage holes in the bottom, then there won't be enough water inside the soil to expand and freeze and break the pots. Here we're trying to find the appropriate soil shelf to put in our pots. Soil shelf is a great way to help maintain appropriate drainage um, that keeps the, the pots frost resistant in the winter. There's a barrier between the soil and the bottom of the pot, so that those in, which ensures that those drainage holes are going to remain clear of soil and debris. Since there are, of course, a lot of different shapes of pots, you might have to try a couple of different sizes to get the, the soil shelf to sit at the right height within the pot. Uh, you wanna, generally speaking, depending on what you're growing, you wanna have about two thirds of the pot filled with soil and then the bottom third can be beneath the soil shelf. Another great benefit of having the soil shelf in place is that you don't have the entire profile of the planter filled with soil. So it makes it a lot lighter, um, easier to move around if you need to. You're basically just looking for some sort of lightweight material to fill the bottom of the pot with. What we've done here is used packaging peanuts. Basically, what you do is fill approximately the bottom third to bottom half. Um, for some of these planters, because they were so tall, I think we ended up doing like the bottom two thirds. Fill up with your packaging peanuts or your empty soda cans, whatever it may be. It's very important at the end of the season, every season, we remove everything out of the planters because these peanuts will decompose. Um, and they turn into a lovely mushy substance that will plug the drainage holes right up and make them very much not frost proof. Um, and then you use a sheet of landscape fabric. Uh, we sell rolls at the store, but we also sell um, 
smaller cutout pieces if you're only doing a couple planners. Um, so we have one of these pre-cut and we just place that in over top of the layer of packaging peanuts. You wanna make sure there's enough overlap um, because you don't want the soil to leak down into the packaging peanuts because that's what's gonna kind of trickle down to the bottom and potentially create some mud and block up those drainage holes. The packing peanuts we used here were compostable, which means that it's really important that we compress down on the packing peanuts and the soil um, to eliminate future risk of uh, everything settling down. So before I water and before I plant anything, I'm making sure I compress this down really well. Um, and then after, when I plant and water, I'm gonna make sure that everything is still compressed down well and I'll possibly we'll have to add more soil as we go on. As you can see, it compacted down quite a bit. So what I like to do first is set the plants in the locations that I think I want them to go just so I can get an idea for spacing and, and look and just make sure everything kind of fits the way I'd like it to. So I'll start placing these plants now and see how everything fits. So it's important to have a rough idea of about how tall various plants you're using are going to get. Um, the general structure you're going for, as I'm sure you've heard before, you have your taller plants, your thrillers in the center or towards the back. Um, you have your fillers, which are going to be kind of the more spreading plants to kind of just fill in spaces in amongst between them. And then you have something flowing down the side, they call that the spiller. It's kind of your general formula, but you can riff off of that in any way you'd like. I'm putting the white mandevia with the pink one and they will travel up the trellis and intertwine with each other, which will look really pretty. I also am putting the hibiscus in there. Um, just really kind of concentrate the tropical flower look in this one. So we laid out roughly what we think we like so we can get a feel for how everything goes together. I think I'm I'm pretty into it. Got something tall in each pot. Got a couple of things that'll trail down. Got a lot, a good mix of colors and textures. And then we will end up filling in with some of the smaller plants from our super flats. Any holes that kind of appear as we put all the plants in. So we had to use a pruner to cut away the pot on this bird of paradise here. It's pretty root bound so we just want to make sure we get those roots to stop spiraling around the pot so that they can expand out into the, the new soil of the, the pot and help the plant not choke itself out. It's important that you keep all of the plants at the same level. You don't want to bury them any deeper or have them any higher out of the soil um, than they were in their original pots. So sometimes you have to borrow some soil from other areas of the pot to fill in as you go and then add more soil at the end. A lot of times I like to have a empty bucket of soil next to me to just to help kind of toss some out as I need to make room for the plant's roots or add some back in um, to help fill in empty spaces or bring them up to the appropriate level. Again, it's very important to loosen up the roots so that they don't continue to circle around in the shape of the pot. A lot of times that's why people uh, don't see their plants perform well in their pots. Uh, basically, even though they are in a new bigger pot with new soil, 
the roots are still spiraling around in that same little circle of volume they had in their original pot. Filling in the holes with extra soil. Making sure that you're compacting out any air pockets. You want to have a little bit of air in there, but that's why you have perlite and these other elements in the potting soil. So it'll help create a little bit of air pockets. Um, but when you're planting, you really want to press that soil down and make sure there are no air pockets. So they will end up filling with water and then compressing down. And just generally not ideal for root growth. And then we want to make sure we're watering in the planters after we plant them. Just kind of helps everything settle in and see where we need to add more soil. Um, plus the sun's come out and it's getting pretty warm so we'll make sure everybody is nice and nice and watered. Now we're putting in the sweet potato vine. This is your trailer. The sweet potato will get super long and trail down the side of the pot. The chartreuse color looks particularly awesome against the deep cobalt blue of these pots. One of my favorite combinations. I really like the way the, the, the bright colors are kind of highlighted against the cobalt blue pots. Uh, this is definitely my favorite color pot. I find that any flower I put in these blue pots looks really, really beautiful. Um, we picked these pots out in Vietnam, my dad and I, and uh, we drug my husband along this time too, so he got to pick out some of these pots too. So here we are a couple weeks later with the finished product. Planters are growing in really nicely. I really love the way everything looks. Um, definitely has that tropical feel that we were going for. Got really bright colors popping against the blue. Um, I've got my, my spillers coming down the side. Everything looks lush and beautiful. So super exciting. It's the perfect anchor point for that, um, for the back patio. Um, and really kind of sets the setting for having a couple of drinks at sunset. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to make your own planner, come on into the store. We've got lots of associates here who would love to help you pick out your colors and textures and give you advice on making your very own tropical planner for your patio.